I don't like you demons. I don't like you demons take my soul. You demons will take my soul away. I don't like you demons steal my soul. I don't know what's going on. What's going on? What is going on? You remember the case of Tristan Bailey, the cheerleader who was brutally murdered by her friend and classmate? Well, this is the killer, Aiden Fucci. It's not clear whether he is pretending to be crazy in this footage to weasel himself out of jail or if it's real. But what he did to Tristan that night can only be described as pure evil. But why did he do it? And will Tristan finally get the justice she deserves? Here's an update on the case. It Ain't My Problem Teen tells parents after being cheerleader 114 times. Just to recap, Tristan Bailey was a 13-year-old student and cheerleader at Patriot Oaks Academy in St. John's, Florida. She was one of five children of Stacy and Forrest Bailey and was described as a sweet girl who brought life to everyone around her. But on Mother's Day morning of May 9th, 2021, her family woke up to find her missing from her bed. The last time they saw her was around midnight, and now she was gone. By 10 a.m. that morning, a search was already underway, and everyone in the community had gathered to help find the missing teen. The authorities had even issued a missing child alert. But unfortunately, at around 6 p.m., a jogger in the neighborhood would find a young girl's body hidden in the woods. The body would turn out to be Tristan. She had been stabbed 114 times in the head and neck and had multiple defensive wounds on her arms. A buck knife with a missing tip was found in a pond near her body, and the fragment would later be found lodged in Tristan's scalp. So how did she end up there? And who was behind this brutal killing? When investigators checked surveillance footage from around the neighborhood, they saw something pretty disturbing. At around 1.14 a.m., Tristan could be seen walking outside in the dimly lit streets. But she isn't alone. She's accompanied by a male figure, and they appear to be heading east toward a wooded area in their neighborhood, where her body would later be found. Less than two hours later, around 3.30 a.m., the male figure is seen running barefoot in the opposite direction. He was alone. This footage led investigators to the doorstep of 14-year-old Aiden Fucci, who happened to be Tristan's classmate and friend. Now that you're all caught up, let's continue. According to Aiden's arrest record, he admitted that he was indeed with Tristan that night at a mutual friend's house and that they left together at around 1.50 a.m. He claimed that while they were walking home, Tristan tried to grab him and he pushed her away real hard so that she hit her head on the ground and then he walked away in anger. However, investigators said that Aiden kept changing his story multiple times. At one time, he even claimed that Tristan had gone to meet up with a narcotics dealer in the woods. But when investigators found the dealer, they quickly determined that he had nothing to do with the case. This happened when Tristan was still missing. When her body was found, Aiden was still at the police station being questioned. When his mother came in to give him the news, his response was pretty cold and unfeeling. You found this girl, right? Where? In our neighborhood, down on Main Street. Is she good? No, no she's, not. she's dead. That's why this is very important. It's all in you right now. Yeah, my problem. But what made this case really blow up was what Aiden did when the police came to take him after Tristan's body was found. Believe it or not, he actually took a selfie in the back seat of the police cruiser and posted it on Snapchat with the caption, Hey guys, has anybody seen Tristan lately? How insensitive is that? Someone in the comments reportedly replied, You were with her, Aiden you know what happened to her. Reports say that he was just a person of interest at the time and had not been charged yet. Still, this is really messed up. And it's not the only thing he did. He also posted several disturbing videos still in the backseat of the patrol car, acting like this was all a big joke to him. In this clip, he was with a friend and they appeared to be joking around and talking about Tristan. We're, we're having fun in a fucking cop car. Yep, Tristan. What's up guys? Tristan, if you fucking walk out the damn. In another clip, he's alone in the car saying, It's in a cop car, guys. She's tripping, dude. The public was completely outraged with these posts, which soon went viral. Many saw this as Aiden bragging about what he did to Tristan, while others saw it as an attempt to make himself look innocent. Whatever the case, his parents were also not amused by them and even scolded him at the police station. No, 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 no. 
Snapchat, you get those numbers. It's all over, all over the internet, everywhere. When the police searched Aiden's home, they found a buck knife sheath in his room, as well as wet shoes and a shirt with blood on them. They also found a notebook in his room with violent drawings of women, including one that showed a female with red X's on her breasts and severed arms with blood pouring out. Surveillance footage inside the home also showed Aiden walking into the house at 3.30 a.m. on the night of the murder, and not surprisingly, he was barefoot and holding a pair of Nike shoes. Another shocking footage showed Aiden's mom, Crystal Smith, washing blood out of her son's jeans at the time he was being questioned by the police. Then later, while at the police station, Crystal was reportedly overheard asking her son if he was sure there was nothing in his clothes from the night before. I don't think so, why? Aiden asked. Crystal was then observed giving Aiden a questioning look and whispered, blood. During the search warrant, police found the jeans in Aiden's room and it tested positive for blood. Additional blood evidence was discovered in the drain of the bathroom. Crystal was arrested in June 2021 and charged with evidence tampering. She pleaded guilty to the charges and was sentenced to 30 days in jail, plus five years probation. Crystal Smith is preparing to spend her first night in jail as she begins her 30-day sentence for tampering with evidence in the murder of 13-year-old Tristan Bailey. Bailey's mom took the stand today with a message for Smith. I may never know the answers, but this is, one, like, this is my one chance, Crystal. Please tell me the truth. As for Aiden, he was initially charged with second-degree murder and held in a juvenile justice center. Second-degree murder is when the killing was not premeditated. But in this case, chilling new information would be revealed, showing that Aiden had planned to kill that night. Apparently, a few days before Tristan's murder, Aiden had told some friends that he planned to kill someone by dragging them into the woods and stabbing them though he didn't specify who. In an interview with investigators, Aiden's girlfriend said that he often carried a knife with him and would sometimes sneak up on her and pretend to slit her throat, though she and other friends never took it seriously. The girlfriend went on to say that at one point, Aiden had asked her what she would do if he ever murdered someone. I don't know what my answer really was, but he would say that if he was going to murder someone, it was gonna be planned. Okay. I said that he would just walk at night or something and find like a random person walking to and just drag them in the woods. She also said that Aiden claimed to hear voices in his head when he was angry that would tell him to kill people. Aiden did admit to investigators that he was on antidepressants. With this new revelation, the prosecutors upgraded the charge to first degree murder. He pleaded not guilty to the charges and was held without bail to await trial. Now, while you might think that being in jail would at least give Aiden an opportunity to reflect on his actions and realize that what he did was wrong, that's not what happened. The sheriff's office incident reports document several instances where Aiden was involved in disruptive behavior, such as getting into fights, having contraband, bullying inmates, and threatening guards. One inmate would say that Aiden had told them that he was the real deal because he stabbed a girl face to face, unlike others who resorted to shooting someone. And like that's not enough, it was also revealed that Aiden had been sending text messages to his parents while in jail, in which he would refer to his cell as his bat cave and talk about playing video games on his tablet. In one message he sent to his dad on August 21st, he said, hey, I'm gonna go back to my bat cave and call y'all. So love you, bye, the tablet is about to die. It's at seven. In early September 2021, he wrote his mother saying, I was playing Candy Crush, but I guessed I ran out of lives. He also told her that he couldn't play online games, just offline. Basically, it seemed like he was having the time of his life in jail. Then, during his preliminary hearing, he began acting weird. Aiden Fucci looks around aimlessly, appearing to be confused during court on Wednesday. What's going on? He rocks back and forth and mumbles about demons. How come on? I don't hate you, demons. 
I don't want to hear you demons take my soul. You demons want to take my soul away. I don't know you demons steal my soul. I spoke with attorney Jean Nichols, who is not affiliated with this case. Is it common for high profile cases like this for the defendant to have a mental incompetency evaluation? What, what you would see in most of these cases similar to this is yes, you're going to have your client evaluated for competency, especially for a young person like this to have allegedly committed such an awful crime. Many who saw the footage believed that Aiden was putting up an act to get out of going to prison. But a forensic psychologist who reviewed the footage said that it was hard to tell if the odd behavior was real or not. From my perspective, he, it seemed genuine given that pattern of behavior today. It seemed that Aiden would plead the not guilty card by reason of insanity. But for some reason, his lawyer never asked for a mental competency evaluation to be done. Then in January, 2023, just before jury selection was to begin, Aiden surprised everyone when he changed his plea to guilty. He also wrote a letter apologizing to Tristan's family saying, first off, I want to say that I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all the pain I caused to the Bailey family. I'm sorry to the friends, brothers, sisters, mom, dad, and any other family relatives. I know my apology will not fix anything or bring her back, but I hope it will help in some way. Before he was sentenced, Tristan's family was given a chance to give their victim impact statement. One of Tristan's sisters brought an empty jar on the witness stand and dropped heart-shaped stones into the jar, one by one making sure that each one had an impact as it landed. This jar now holds 114 stones, one for each of the 114 stab wounds that my sister had to endure. It was one hour and 42 minutes between when my sister was last seen and when Aiden Fucci was next seen, running out of the woods holding his shoes because his feet hurt. It's funny that such a simple statement can bring such anger. She went on to ask Aiden several pointed questions, including if he got caught up in the thrill of the kill. Did she see you coming at her with the knife? Or did you see her while she wasn't paying attention? Did she scream out for help? Or was she para paralyzed with agony? Did she cry for my mother? Did she beg you to stop? The grieving family asked the judge to give Aiden the maximum sentence, saying that he could not be rehabilitated and was beyond saving. Tristan's devastated mom says that the thought that she wasn't there to protect her daughter that day still eats at her every day. It's 3 a.m. I'm startled awake again, as I am every night, multiple times a night. My head is pounding in pain. My thoughts are racing. My anxiety is high. My chest is tight. The thoughts immediately start. The time tells me that it's over. Tristan lost her life by now. At the end of each testimony, Tristan's loved ones dropped a white, heart-shaped stone on top of the jar, filled with aqua stones. As they added their white stones, they shared what it represented to them, something Aiden had taken away from them when he killed Tristan. But get this, despite everything he had done, his family actually tried to get the judge to go easy on him. His grandmother even wrote a letter begging the judge not to take him away, saying that there is still some good in him. I know he has to be punished and, um, for his actions, and I love him, and his family love him very much, too. And I, I know we're a very large Christian family, and uh, we pray all the time, and I just hope you consider it a little bit, and please don't take him out of our lives forever. She apologized to Tristan's family saying, I and my family feel deep sadness for the loss of your beautiful child. And I know the heartache that you and your family must feel. You have been and will continually be in my prayers. After all the testimonies were made, it was now the judge's turn to give his sentence. He called the case the most difficult and shocking case that St. John had encountered. What is also very troubling is that this crime had no motive. This was not done out of, out of greed. It was not done in retaliation, retribution, or revenge. It was not a crime of passion. It was not a crime that was committed because he felt rejected by her. It was not done in, an, in a fit of uncontrollable anger. 
There was no reason. There was no purpose. It was done for no other reason than to satisfy this defendant's internal desire to feel what it was like to kill someone. The judge sentenced Aiden to life in prison, but said that because of his age, he'll be eligible for parole after 25 years. After the sentencing, Tristan's dad had a few words for his little girl. Tristan, to let you know, we are so extremely proud of the person that you were in your time here. We have seen that when you went out into the world, you gave it your very best. You should be proud of the friend that you were, the teammate you were, and what you left behind and the people that knew you, that we trust, will go forward and continue to make the world a better place. What do you think about this case? Do you think Aiden's weird behavior in court was an act? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more.